Nope. Last question, as a, as a Chinese American man, I love, I love pasta. Whoa. Next thing, what we happened? About, we about to bust. <laughs> <laughs>
and then he'd be like, and what? Sicilian. So, so it can even get tribal within Italian Americans exactly, based yeah. on where your grandparents are from. And when you were with the Sicilians, or are you ever playing up the wise guy like identity? And then when you're with the not, uh, the more northern side, you're more like, yeah, yeah, the, the, of course, the Romans. The Romans, very you know, they were cultured yeah. guys, you know, they were great people. But uh, yeah, you know, some not really all the time though, honestly. But honestly. you're saying back in the day, it was more like that. Yes, absolutely. People cared more. Oh, people cared more. Uh, all right, we are wrapping it up here at Emilio Bellato, and we're gonna go take a quick walk around Little Italy, and then we're gonna end off the video at a very, very traditional, authentic Italian spot. Where do you like to go eat? I don't like to go eat in Little Italy, to be honest. Okay. It's too touristy, but okay. I like it here. I understand that. Forget about me. Other places, I wanna learn too. I wanna go to a nice place. I'm looking to learn every day. <laughs> Tell me where. Um, how about my... you guys? You could, you, could, you could come in with this. What do you think? What do you uh, like? This is Italian. more. It's a Thai food, but a little bit very Americanized. Uh, you know how meatballs started with spaghetti and meatballs? It's Sunday, Southern Italy. We make meatballs. We, make, we fry meatballs in lard. Right. And we eat it because in, in Southern Italy, we don't have much olive oil. And it's very expensive. So everybody had a pig. Once a year, they kill the pig, they take the fat, they make lard. And they made meatballs. And when they made meatballs, the majority is bread because a long time ago, meat was a lot of money. So they would put a little percentage of cheese, yeah, eggs, yeah. Left, and they would fry the meatballs. The meatballs you eat nice and warm every day. Straight the up. next day, when you get tired of them, they put a little sauce on it and they make a little tomato with... Oh, you understand so putting the meatballs in the spaghetti was almost like a way to get the leftovers eaten. Yeah, there you okay. Go. We make food very simple here. Simple food. Simple, like I said, the best ingredients bring the best Money product. Money can buy maybe four or five ingredients. That's the key. Right. And it's made with love. With a lot of love. Love. Yeah. A lot it's of authentic. love. And you know what? The owner, is, the owner is always got to be. Okay, so the clam linguine and the chicken parm, those were the best I've ever had. And Emilio, the owner, definitely did live up to the hype too. It was like a scene out of The Sopranos. It reminded me about how good Italian food can actually be. The portions are huge, the ingredients are great, but bring some friends, because, uh, you know, the good stuff ain't cheap. What is a Lower East Side Italian's opinion on Little Italy? It's very nostalgic to me. Even just the smell of like the pastry shops. Even in Little Italy, there was a, there's a feast in September. It's old culture and old Italian eating, uh, dining. One big like party is like. Do you think in 2020 it's kind of like lost its like unity feel? Yeah, I definitely think that. Yeah, and you know that older generation, you know, a lot of them are older now. Uh, a lot of them like moved out of the neighborhood, and um, it's just not really the same anymore. I had barely been into Italian restaurants before, to be honest, and that is definitely one of the more expensive ones, but the higher quality ones, and it gave me that real authentic experience. All right, just like Emilio Bellato said, we gotta get an espresso. This is actually my first time getting a true espresso. Did you do this growing up? Yeah, more for like uh, family events though, more yeah, than anything. Yeah, yeah. Before we drink it, guys, say salute. Salute. Hello. Let's go. Salute. Salute. Uh, when we walked in there, man, something that you kept talking about was the rainbow cookie. It's my favorite Italian pastry. You know, you got your chocolate on the outside, you got your jelly on the inside, and you know, the best thing about it is that- It's almost like a PB&J, right? It's oh, this is the color of the Italian flag? Yeah, yeah. Uh, rainbow cookie. Come on, how good is that, man? I feel like that each layer has different flavor. I'm getting more of the chocolate with the jelly. Portino, this this name you had to get some clarification on, right? That reminds me, what we're eating right now, of how an Italian pastry shop smells. That's what you're eating. I mean. Oh, it does. All right, let's, let's get in these cannolis real quick, man. Mm, that's really good. Cool. That like cinnamon vibe right now, right? Apparently, this is something from Italy. Well, that's really good for that. Wow, is there alcohol in there? Because it almost tastes fermented, right? It's like fermented, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess this is a crazy, weird way to put it, but like, how, how do you fit in with like Anglo whites? Like more like people who have been, you know what I mean? Their, their grandparents, great grandparents don't speak another language. It's still, it's been English for it's like, like 10 Dutch, generations. like generations. I get along with them pretty good to be honest. I get along with everybody pretty well, but um. Do you, do you feel like they look at you different and you look at them different? I think they look at me different. Just the way I speak, the way I talk to people the way my culture is, but for me to look at other people like that, I usually don't tend to do that. I know that I get looked at in a different way for the most part by the Anglo-Saxon whites, for sure. But because it, how, how yeah. I speak and how I look especially, you know, they see the watch, the jewelry, the, the chest hair coming down to my ankles, 
Right. They're also, immediately yeah. thinking a lot of things, right? Like yeah, they're involved. immediately going to like tropes in their exactly. head for movies. Right? And, and that's where like the stereotypes begins. The, the, it begins there, you know. Oh, look at this uh, Italian guy from New York City, from Little Italy. No, right. do, I, they, so do, I they, do they ever do they ever be like, hey man, like you know somebody we do to go whack somebody? Yeah. <laughs> and, like, one day I was driving and somebody asked like, oh you're Italian, and then he looked like you know people. And I'm like, yeah, I have three bodies in the back of my truck. And they're like, oh my god. <laughs> like they step right on the wheel, like. So I, I get that a lot, to be honest with you. But I just laugh about it now because I got that for so long that to me it's like normal. What do you think about people who I guess are more like the situation of Cuomo's, where they're like trying to come up in American society and they feel those stereotypes are holding them back. Whereas like for you, maybe you know me knowing you, you play ball, you, you're more in the urban community. You're kind of like more multicultural like that. But what about the Italians that are trying to enter high society in America where that wasp background might be something yeah. more desired and more trusted than the Italian? Yeah, because I think it's hard actually, but I also feel that that those guys who make it, they did everything they can, like Cuomo, to be where they are in society. But you And you're always going to get your stereotypes. You know, it's just how you go about it. Like Cuomo's brother didn't go about it in a good way. You know, kind of, kind of confirmed it. Yeah, right? and he kind of confirmed it, but he apologized, which I respect those Cuomo so much, both of those brothers. But you have to try to look at those stereotypes and laugh about it if you want to try to be better than, I guess you could say, like your average Italian. Cannoli King, right? Cannoli King, pal. All What's right, happening, man. brother? This is French. Marco. What's up? Hey, nice Marco. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. These guys. Uh, you for something? Uh, he's an Italian American, and we always talk about like, uh, how, how can Italian Americans continue to represent uh, Italian culture? How do they keep doing it? Even though, uh, you know, Italy, little Italy is shrinking. Maybe. Let me tell you something. All neighbors are shrinking. Chinatown's shrinking yeah, too. That's true. When we were kids, it was all Italians around here. But as our kids got older, and we want them, especially me, I want them, my kids to go to better schools. They had to move out of New York City. Yeah. Right, right, Not right. Little Italy in particular. It's out of New York City. Yeah. And we went to, we moved to Jersey, and we got better schools for them. That's right. But, like but as an Italian American, I still live the life. Right. I still, you know, I still buy pastries. I don't speak the language to it, right. but I understand it. But the culture's still here, the people are still here, uh, the food is still here, I believe they still right. here. My man here, he's, he's from the Knickerbocker. He's from the Knickerbocker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. one of the, the last Italian kids in this neighborhood. Now, when you say Knickerbocker, Knickerbocker downtown? Not in Brooklyn, the Knickerbocker over here, right here. I tell you from there. What's your name? Uh, Marco Lombardi. You relate to uh, me? Yes, my uncle. Oh, V Lombardi? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh uncle. my man, V. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you X, bro. Baby John. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Community right here, yeah. His neighborhood is not Little Italy no more. It was never. Yeah, the Chinese it's invaded them. It's Chinese them. Them. <laughs> Now, but Little Italy is still Little Italy on Mulberry Street. That's right. Because we have the restaurants. They got a different group over there. They're, they're locals, they're people, residents. Over here, it's commercialized. Absolutely. His name was not commercialized. Yeah. Chinatown and Little Italy have been next to each other okay. for we, many years. We have an organization called Two Bridges. Oh, yes, I'm sure you heard it. Right here. Right on the show. I've heard yeah, of Two, two Bridges. Bridges. Yeah. So that's the organization. After 9 11, we went broke. Chinatown went broke. And when we advertised Chinatown, right? And we stuck together, two of us. Last question, as a, as a Chinese American, man, I love, I love pasta, I love uh, ravioli, I love you know tortellini. You know what they say. But I love noodles and dumplings. What, what they say? We robbed, we robbed the pasta from you guys. <laughs> what do you think? Or you don't know? It doesn't. You know, no, I wasn't around then. I love Chinese food. Let these people know that when they come down this area, they gotta come to Little League and Chinatown together. Yeah. Make that show. Go to both. Hey, it. make sure you send them my love. I will. Take care. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Please. No, for sure. Hey, I've been with Baby John. You know, definitely. I'll tell them that. I haven't seen him in a small world. Yeah. yeah. I'm, uh, I'm Michael's son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, like a lot of other non-Italian American kids out there, when it comes to ravioli, lasagna, and baked ziti, I've only either had the Olive Garden version or the microwavable version. So how about this time we just try a good version? But aren't you guys, we are having an Italian American feast here at La Mello. There's so many different levels between Olive Garden and like what people are eating in Italy. We had to fill it in. <laughs> uh, this is more towards the Olive Garden side, but definitely still more authentic than that. So we got some stuffed mushrooms here. This is for me, a homemade grandma meal right here. This is what I eat on, on Sundays. Stuffed mushroom. Stuffed. What's inside is essentially a lot of vegetable and a lot of cheese. And it has like, like that nice butter sauce on top of it. Yes, absolutely. And that's what makes it American. In Italy, mostly they don't usually butter, they use a lot of olive oil. Mm. Here yeah, we nice. have some well done garlic bread. <laughs> told me it's almost like bruschetta at this point. Wow. Can we dip our garlic bread in the mushroom sauce? 
it's a, it's gonna be a sin if you don't. All right, so we're talking to the manager here, and he's actually Albanian, but he speaks Italian and Spanish. And Albania, I just learned, because I didn't know anything, is actually really close to Italy. All right, David, I have a piece of fresh basil for you, and a stuffed mushroom. Dude, oh, good. Good. I feel like it's a 1975 uh, Mulberry Street. How you doing? The Italian American American Italian feast has arrived. Same. Serve the big ziti up. Serve guys, the big so let's do this, guys. Oh yeah, so this is a very American uh, Italian dish. You know, you got the ziti pasta and you have your cheese. And and in Italy, you're never gonna find a dish like this. But if I go to Italy and I ask them for big ziti, I'm either gonna get, gonna get kicked in the head or they're gonna tell me to get out of the restaurant. A mangiare bene, buon appetito a tutti, bello. Big ziti. You know what I might have had it at like a hospital cafeteria before. This is good, this is good though, this is better. And in Italy, you might not find the portions this big. Like we eating for three of us, I feel like, like there should be 10 of us here eating all this. This is shrimp parmesan. Shrimp parmesan. parmesan. Way better than chicken. What kind of prawns are these, bro? <laughs> these are like lobsters. Let me serve up this vodka sauce. For me, this is like the most basic dish, honestly. And I actually had this yesterday. What is vodka sauce? Is that a mix? It's a heavy cream sauce. It has a touch of tomato sauce, Parmesan cheese, and vodka in it. So are we gonna get drunk after eating this? Not, you know, it doesn't have that much to get you drunk, but yeah. you'll, you'll be like kind of, uh, that kind of tipsy. Vodka penne. Yo, this wow. one's really good. Very good. Wow, I gotta say, man, I'm surprised because you look at it, it looks plain because there's no meat, but the pasta is cooked perfectly. It's still very chewy. Dude, that is a lot of cream. That's a lot of cream. <laughs> That's a like, hell of a lot. That is dangerous. All right. In a good uh, way. Yeah, I'm an animal, so I just go in right with the fork and just make a mess. Chicken, Chicken fettuccine, fettuccine Alfredo. Alfredo. I don't think anybody in the world can hate that, except maybe people from Italy. <laughs> yeah, it's a truth, yeah. really. So we got the chicken franchise with the rigatoni. Chicken franchise. I would say the chicken franchise like kind of lacks some of the conventional appeal. I feel like it's very like light. Like it's good for for now. After having this meal, authenticity does not necessarily directly correlate with deliciousness. John, I need to see you eat like two of those shrimps. I don't know why. This is my favorite part when he eats. This is so much fun. My so way. excited. My no, God. God. There we go. Much hype, Penny. Is that much money? We're not at Olive Garden anymore. We had a, a good discussion off camera because we concluded something. I would choose honestly the Italian American dish, obviously over the, the real like authentic Italian. But but if I'm trying to impress a female, I'm gonna take her to probably Emilio Bellato's, show off a little bit, teach her the real culture of Italy, and then after two or three dates, I bring her here, and then maybe a dollar pizza the next date. All right, that wraps it up for the Italian American section, and our next spot we're heading to is actually a Tuscany spot. No, you should not leave, uh, yeah, Yentai, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's where our mom's side is from. Tell me that. Yeah. Oh, well, mama, well, mama is Yentai, right? Yentai, Uh, Fushan. No, touch it with Didi. Yeah, what is it? Didi. Okay, so time for some food that's so Italian, Marco's never even tried it. Tuscany is a region known as the birthplace of the Italian Renaissance, having a major influence on architecture, art, statues, and all that high culture. In fact, it has a pretty different reputation than Sicily. So, this is gonna be interesting. How different is the Tuscan cuisine from something that we might be familiar with that we just had? The Sicilian? Yeah, it's more sour. They use a lot of the tomato, of course. And of course, down there in the South, they use more seafood. In Tuscany, they have the meats. We're here in the South Village at Altesi Restaurante. This is run by people from Italy. We just spoke to the manager. He's from Italy. He tried to speak Italian to you. Yes, I have no. I had no clue what he was saying. Hey, 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 my head. hey, did you see his reaction when you're, you're like, no, I don't speak Italian. No, you don't speak yeah, Italian. Yeah, he got so he, upset. He goes, you don't, he goes, yeah, I think he said, ah. Oh. <laughs> Don't speak Italian. This is sliced veal from Tuscany with arugula. This is the vitello tonato. This is the uh, carpaccio, the raw beef. Have you ever had that before? Never had it before. It's really good. Yo, this, is, this is the best Italian really food good. I've had in one day, man. Uh, let's try this burrata. Burrata is a very creamy, soft mozzarella cheese over arugula. If you take the camera, we get this all for free, right? So it's like on the house today. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I like that. Oh, oh free. <laughs> Enjoy. The Sicilian hustlers. Oh, man. Taglitel with ragu. This is lamb. Taglioni. This squid is Taglioni, the squid ink pasta. This is definitely something I feel like traditionally is more from Italy versus Italian American. Oh, yes. Ooh, how spicy. Oh, I love that spice. Gotta, gotta kill it. Gotta kill it. Gotta kill it. All right, the lamb is amazing in this. 
But the spice, bro, that's what takes it, that's dude. Takes it right Along with the top-notch calamari, we could also feel there was some inter-Italian hierarchical shade being thrown between Marco and the manager. You know, it was all in good fun, but it does go to show you the diversity within Italy. So let's end off at a gelato spot that was just opened by a guy from Milan. Who knows who we'll meet next? I can tell that while we're filming this and walking around, a lot of people are looking at you because I don't think that many people your age speak with your type of New York accent in this part of town. Oh, so it's either my accent or I'm just really, really loud. Right. So it could be a little bit of both. What am I, chop liver? Pizza, happy forget about. All right, all right, we're just go. looking for some so gelato. All right, okay, all right. right. In Sicily specifically, it's a melting pot because you have historically, you have the Moorish conquest that came through about 500 years ago. You have the Franco-Gallic conquest. You have Greeks, you have a lot of Greek influence. So when you go to Sicily, there are certain parts of Sicily that um, when you have like in Catania, which is, Northeast, Arabic influence. When you have your southern regions of Sicily, you have your Greek influence. Eastern, you have your Greek also, and then your northern, eastern region of Sicily, that's when you have like your Gallic influence, your Viscos that came up. You have music, you have culture, and I think that's skirted over a lot when you're talking about when, when Americans think of S Sicilian culture. I think it's unfortunate, that's just my own personal opinion. Do you think it's just like a media thing that people found like they could make money off of it, so that's the angle they just get to push and push because people think it's like it's cool in a bad way? Yeah, I mean, you know, you have the elements of drama that play in and the elements that you can play up in media. Obviously, it's a lot more interesting to have a saga about crime and it sells. Uh, it sells. Hollywood loves that because it sells, yeah. you know? And it's all simpler also. It's a lot simpler story to actually tell. Right, yeah. right. Like, like why like paint it with 20 up. brushes when you can just take one big brush? Exactly. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, your southern Italian culture and your northern Italian culture are very, very different. Um, not only culturally, even in the modern sense, but historically as well. Your cuisines of southern Italy are completely different from northern Italy. Um, your music is different. Your art is different. Um, and your level of modernization is also, even nowadays, when you go to Northern Italy, I mean, as far as the industry is concerned, it's more than what we even have here. So, so what would be your recommendation to like Italian Americans who like, like what should they do to maintain Italian culture in your opinion? Study the history. Study the history. Are you a history I'm not a history. Nah, I, know you <laughs> I heard your voice on the History Channel. I know. <laughs> The narrator is yeah, the narrator of history. Yeah, but clearly, but clearly you have done some studying. You looked yeah, into it. Yes, yeah. yes. Italian's been in America for what, like 100 years? Yeah. Roughly. Now, in 2020, they're still kind of considered a little bit different than, yeah, I guess, like an Anglo white. Yeah. They're more melted than they were, right? That's what, what, what do you think other immigrant groups that are still in their second generation can take away from somebody who's like in their fourth or fifth? I know the best answer to this don't lose your language. The Italian Americans as a group has, have assimilated more than any other group and they've lost their language more than any other group. And that's the one thing that I can recommend. Don't lose your language. That yeah, you're not talking about Chinese, but it applies to me, I'm so. I'm doing that Rosetta Stone once I get home. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't lose your language. That's the biggest thing that I, I can tell that's you. That's it, I'm marrying a girl from China. That's it. <laughs> we came back to Mo Which one do you like better? Feel like we're not believing me? Yeah, like you gotta choose. Which one would you choose? Yeah, I, I think Sicilian French. Oh, man. <laughs> I like that, good man. That other guy at the other spot didn't like me. Like. All right, here we have a dessert that he kind of made up. This is the chocolate salami. Wow, that might be really good. That's interesting. It's chopped up biscotti in like a thick, dark chocolate brownie. Yo, my biggest takeaway in all seriousness today was um, I'd actually never really been exposed to like this Italian world. I don't want to be stereotypical, but it kind of did feel like a movie. I love being able to experience this with you. Marco, appreciate Yo, it, bro. thank you for having me, Huge, guys. Huge, man. It was, like, great, man. It, was Listen, like, it was like, man, I feel honestly like more American. And thanks for having me, guys. It was great. It was great. I learned a lot of things from you guys too today, so I appreciate that, man. Hey, you know, I appreciate that. Like I said, Marco, to me, I don't know if you feel comfortable calling yourself, you know, an up and coming like, comedic personality or whatever. Yeah, maybe but one day, guys. Yeah, maybe one day like you'll see me somewhere. I'm hey, predicting it. Hey, leave it, <laughs> leave it in the comments that's below it. if you would like Marco to go be a comedian somehow. Yeah, if you would want to see in Marco some explain way, more you stuff have in the a answer. Let me know. Let me know, baby. All right, we're going to have people vote. But yo, man, that was such a cool video because to be honest, it did force us to do a lot of research about Italy to actually look into the story 
um, behind all the mob stories and the culture on why they became like but, this. But also and, why that, yeah. that's just a stereotype. Yeah, like that's why, just a small percentage of people. Thank you so much for watching this Italian American episode of The World NY. Huge shout out to Marco Lombardi again. Yo, my man, guys, we're family now, baby. Could, could your right. name be more Italian? Lombardi? Lombardi, I'm sorry, guys. Great. My bad. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Please let us know your favorite thing that we ate in the comment section below. Please let us know another Italian-American fact, your favorite movie, your favorite tidbit. There's so many in popular culture. And until next time, we out. Peace. Yo, I was just saying, that you know how cool that was? Because we're in Italy, little, little Italy, and the Cannoli King, he knew your family. Yeah. And then uh, my good friend over here, uh, uncle, the uncle driving us, he's from Yantai Shandong, which is the very specific city that my mom is from. It's not a big place. It's such a small world. Like, look at how that just happened. You know, it's such a small world, and it's like I said, the Italians and the Asian culture, they're so tight knit, and that's why. I love it. Yeah. I, I love you guys. You know yeah, what? I love you guys. You got the family. Yeah, thank you. you. Thank you. Hey, we feel the same way, man. And it's, you know what's dope? Like, just like you have that camaraderie with everybody in Little Italy when you told them the, the apartment you're from, the building you're from, everybody knew. Yeah. And then it was just kind of like us with uh, our friend right here saying like, oh, you, you from where my mom is from? Like, oh, it's, it's lit. Yeah, it's yeah. lit. Small world though, man. It really is. Yeah. And like you said, that, that sort of uh, familial, almost like uh, back to the old village days. Exactly.